so I read about the story a long time ago, and at that point was working on a on another film, and I thought it was I thought it was a a good story. I thought it was a fun yarn and kind of interesting enough to want to try and understand more and try and understand a bit of the motivation behind the crime, especially given that the perpetrators were not, you know, your average group of criminals. Um, they seem to be well brought up and from good families and with plenty of opportunities and from, you know, nice homes. And that sat oddly in terms of what, you know, what the crime was about and how uh, audacious it was, I guess. And so uh, coming from a documentary background, my instinct was to try and make contact with the real guys. And at that point, they were quite a way into what ended up being a very long prison sentence. And so we began a correspondence. And um, at the time, there was a big option over the story. You know, Hollywood producer bought up the life rights and all the rest of it. And uh, so I was interested to know whether there was a documentary or just actually just a little bit more about what had led them to do it. And, uh, and what came back from them in their letters was so kind of honest and unexpected that I guess that was the thing that for me turned it from, uh, you know, I guess a good yarn, and I guess everyone loves a heist movie, into something that felt that it was about slightly more than that. And I guess what it was that they said in their letters was really about, uh, I mean, they all had different motivations, but it was really about each of their search for an identity in a way. And the more I heard from them, the more it seemed to feel like a real story of our time. And, you know, particularly one of them, Spencer, who's uh, the lead character who is played by Barry Keoghan, uh, you know, he wrote to me about this, having had this desire to become a, an artist and feeling like he didn't have the one crucial thing that unites all the great artists that have ever lived, which is some life experience or some suffering, and that actually his life was sort of too perfect in some way. And that idea to me of a group of generation, you know, a generation of people who are so lost and have been brought up on this idea that, you know, their lives are going to be special, that they're going to be interesting in some way, yet they feel that they don't really have the criteria with which to make that happen. Uh, so that was really the starting point, and I felt like including the real voices in the film felt like a, a critical way of, of telling the story, particularly as it's a story about people who fall in love with a movie fantasy and try and live inside a movie instead of their real lives. And so it felt like an interesting way to try and tell a film in which nonfiction and fiction kind of blend. Yeah.